The next five problems are provided for mixed practice. If you'd like to pause the video and try them on your own first, that will help to promote not only your understanding, but your long-term memory as well. Looking at number 10 and considering our rules for factoring, number one on the list is GCF. Do we have a greatest common factor? Yes, so we'll factor that out. We can divide 2 out of each term. Up here we would have 12x squared. Bring that down. 8x. Bring that down. And here we'll have 2 divided by 2. This is just going to be 1. Then paying attention to what's left inside parentheses, we have three terms, leading coefficient other than one, so we'll use factor by grouping. We multiply first times last and list the factors. Here are all the factor pairs. Noting that the last term is positive, we're looking for a sum of positive 8. So looking at our list, if we had a positive 2 and a positive 6, we would get positive 8. So we keep the first term, keep the last term, and rewrite the middle term as positive 2x, positive 6x. Now grouping together the first two, we can factor out a 2x. And that would leave us with 6x. And positive 2x divided by positive 2x simply b plus 1. Grouping together the last two, the only GCF is 1. So if we look in the parentheses, we have 6x plus 1. That's exactly what we have here. So we're just going to factor out a positive 1 from each term. And we're left with 6x plus 1. So we're going to factor out 6x plus 1 from each. And when we factor it out from here, we're left with 2x. When we factor it out from here, we're left with plus 1 and don't forget to bring this 2 down. So here's the factored form of the original polynomial. Looking at 11, we have no GCF other than 1 and we have 4 terms. So we use factor by grouping. We'll group together the first two and we could factor out a 3q from each term. And that'll leave us with 2p and simply a negative r. Grouping together the last two, we can factor a 5 out of each term. And this leaves us with 2p and negative r. What we have in parentheses is identical. That's what we're going to factor out. When we factor it out from here, we're left with 3q. 
And when we factor it out from here, we're left with positive 5. Here's the factored form of our original polynomial. Looking at number 12, there is no GCF other than 1, 3 terms leading coefficient other than 1, so we'll use factor by grouping, multiply first times last, and list the factor pairs. Four works, cut that in half. Five goes in there. Six works, cut that in half. Seven won't, eight won't because if I double that, can't cut that in half. Nine doesn't work and we already have 10. Here are all the factor pairs. Noting that the last term is positive, we're looking for a sum of negative 17. Looking through our factor pairs for a sum of negative 17, negative 5, negative 12. If you tried these two numbers, you'd be using a difference, and you need a sum. Keep the first term, keep the last term, rewrite the middle term as negative 5x, negative 12x. Group together the first two, we can get an x out of each term. Dividing out our x would leave us with 3x. Dividing out the x leaves negative 5. Grouping together the last two, we can divide out a 4 from each term. But notice we want a positive and then a negative in parentheses. So we'll divide out a negative 4. That'll change this sign to negative, this one to positive. So here we'll have positive 3x, and here positive divided by negative, negative 5. Now what we have in parentheses is identical, so that's what we will factor out. When we factor it out of here, we're left with x. And when we factor it out of here, negative 4. Here's the factored form of the original polynomial. For number 13, sometimes when you're given four terms that you're expected to factor, you might have to rearrange them in order to use factor by grouping. So you need a common factor other than one for the first two terms. Um, here you could only factor out a one. So I could either put this negative six wx right here or the plus 21 right here. I'll first solve it putting the plus 21 here and then I'll solve it putting the negative six wx right here. Now that we have these two in order, you want the w in the first position. So we'll put negative 6wx right here. And finally, now grouping together the first two, we can factor out a 7. This leaves us with w plus 3. Grouping together the last two. Um, we want both of these terms positive. Presently they're both negative. We can factor out a 6x from each. So we'll factor out a negative 6x from each. And this would, the sixes would cancel, the x's, all we would have is a positive w. 
and here positive 3. What we have in parentheses is identical, so we'll factor it out. Put w plus 3 in parentheses in front of another set of parentheses. When we factor it out of here, we're left with 7. And we factor it out of here, we're left with negative 6x. So here's the factored form of our original polynomial. I'll show one other way I could have arranged this. I'll leave the 7w in front, but you don't necessarily have to do that either, but that'll be my practice. So I just put a line here, um, or here's another way we could have solved it. Again, I'll leave 7w in front. But let's say you had noticed that the uh, negative 6w would give you a common factor of w. So we'll say and noting that the x is in the last position when we look at these two remaining numbers we'll want the plus 21 and negative 18x. Now grouping together the first two, we can factor out that w. And this leaves us with 7, negative 6x. Grouping together the last two, we can factor out a 3. So this leaves us 7 minus 6x. What we have in parentheses is identical. When we factor it out of the first, we're left with w. When we factor it out from here, we're left with plus 3. So once again, we have the factored form of the original polynomial. Notice these parentheses are in the reverse order from these, but that's fine. If you multiply this out, you will get each of these terms. Likewise, if you multiply this out, you will get each of these terms. I'll mention that I haven't shown the only two possible ways to rearrange these terms. So if your answer looks different from either of the two that I've shown, just multiply what you have and you should be able to get the original four terms. Looking at 14, there is no GCF other than one. We have four terms. We'll use factor by grouping. Group together the first two. You can factor out a 7a from each term. And this would leave us with simply a b. And here we would have positive 5. Grouping together the last two, the only GCF is really a 1. Noting here that we want two positive terms. Presently we have two negative terms. We'll factor out a negative 1 from each term. This leaves us with a positive b and a positive 5. What we have in parentheses is identical. That's what we'll factor out. Incidentally, you don't have to show that you're factoring out the b plus 5 in this manner, um, but you do have to put it down here beside the other set of parentheses because that's the only way you'll be able to get back to your original polynomial. 
And again, up here, I always show that I'm factoring it out or dividing it out, but you don't really have to show that. All right, so when you divide out your b plus 5, you're left with 7a. And when you divide out b plus 5, you're left with negative 1. So here's the factored form of our original polynomial.